live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another worldwide transmission. It is Thursday, the 24th day of May 2012. We're about to be halfway in to the vaunted 2012. Well, Bilderberg 2012 is going to be big. Uh, you've got articles in the Washington Post, multiple articles in Salon, articles in Politico, admitting that, well, these are some people that steer a lot of planetary affairs, but you're still bad if you don't like them. Sure, you conspiracy theorists, that is, people that are informed, were actually right, and that's why you're bad. Well, everybody sees through it. Everybody has enough of a memory to remember the media for decades saying Bilderberg doesn't exist. I remember Rush Limbaugh 20 years ago saying the Council on Foreign Relations did not exist. Now, in the last decade or so, he just says they don't have any power. And this is the type of stuff we deal with. The CFR puts out bi-monthly reports called Foreign Affairs. It's, it's at the bookstore calling for global government, calling for geoengineering and controlling the weather, calling for restricting free speech, calling for selling the U.S. out to China for globalism. And there's always good reasons, quote, it's always spin, but it's there. And so those of us that actually did the research and knew what we're talking about, we have credibility. And those of you in the dinosaur media are forced to tag along and now go, oh, there is Bilderberg. Yeah, Obama secretly met there four years ago. We didn't tell you about that. But now we are. Look, they just went to the main page of the Council on Foreign Relations and what's on it today. The guys just went there. What is it? CFR.org? I forget their exact URL. What's the exact URL? They're looking that up. That's right, CFR.org. Oh, look on the front page, global governance. Click on that. Big, giant, I mean, I mean, I mean, there's no global government, but the first thing they have in giant black letters is global governance. And I've had these people on, like the head of the Kissinger Group, Rothkopf, because he thought it was Alex S. Jones. I can't tell you how many times we've gotten big fish on the shows. They think I'm Alex S. Jones, who does a radio commentary or did in the past for NPR and, you know, New York Times guy. And he gets on, he goes, oh, you're that Alex Jones. He, and then I got on with Rothkopf during the break, and he knew who I was. And he goes, okay, well, I'll just finish the interview. But I called him back later to get him on. His secretary said no, not after the last time. But he goes, well, we don't want global government. We want global governance. Of course, governance means government. And they play these mind games with the public. So it doesn't exist, though. You go to their website today, and it says global governance unelected mega bankers who are totally ruthless running our lives speaking of running our lives the system is again through government contracts taxing us private corporations are destroying us uh, they've taken over the government whether it's big pharma and big agra like monsanto or whether it's the big defense contractors who get a lot of their parts made in china now boeing's moved to china General Motors moving to China, uh, everything moving there. And uh, China coming in and buying the biggest theater chain, buying huge controlling positions in the big uh, Hollywood production companies. A year and a half ago, they had to stop the release of the Red Dawn movie and uh, go back and reshoot it so that it's North Koreans invading. Oh, that's real believable. Uh, they can't even get their cars to start because they're under such communism. Uh, but the communist Chinese... They said, we don't want that movie to come out. And so Hollywood said, okay, we'll redo the movie. And now it's in limbo. Like, I've got to look at the update on that and find out what the latest is. And I watched the story on it a few days ago. But uh, this is the type of stuff that we're dealing with here. And we're going to be breaking it down. So they have announced weaponized drones. I mean, I told you. Oh, we'll never have drones over here. Yeah, we'll have 30,000. Yeah, they're going to have hand grenades and shotguns. <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you across the planet listening on XM channel.
channel 166 over 100 AM and FM transmitters here in the United States. WWCR 100,000 watt global world service shortwave. And of course, those of you listening to the free podcast later, those listening to the live streams, I want to welcome everyone listening to this transmission and people watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. Dr. Corsi was already on with us with an update. He was actually in Hawaii investigating. He didn't want us to say that at the time. Now we can. He's there with the cold case posse uh, sent by Sheriff Joe Arpaio. And he's got some new breaking news here for us. He'll be on with us for about 30 minutes at the start of the next hour. And the rest of the broadcast will be open phones and news. Uh, obviously, CBS News is reporting that the new... Uh, arms race worldwide is governments arming against their populations. Drones with hand grenade launchers, uh, gas launchers, uh, 12-gauge shotguns, 30,000 of them to be deployed against the American people, Brigade Homeland, uh, combat troops on the streets, TSA as the first contact group that will then tell you you're detained and have an army truck pull up and get you Re-education camps are built. Army admits those documents are authentic. Uh, we have a complete criminal group in control. And if the police and military and public follow the narrative that's going to be rolled out, we're going to go into deepest tyranny, controlled, designed implosion and depression with the criminals that engineered it posing as saviors. Now, this was actually reported on back in April. But it got a lot of the news yesterday when Drudge linked to CBS. Groups concerned over arming of domestic drones. That headline actually got changed overnight. The link did. It, it, it was police move to arm drones. And the very companies uh, that they report on here are the ones that already have combat drones, small ones, uh, with 12-gauge shotguns. You can buy these just as a citizen. 12-gauge uh, shotguns on them, I know, because... We're doing a report on drones and we're looking at drones and uh, we don't have the budget to buy a $2,000 drone that has a mount for a 22 or 12 gauge. Uh, but the, the, the police departments already have these. And we're talking about a couple thousand dollars for one of these bad boys. 5,000 for a one-fifth scale helicopter you can put rocket launchers on. You can put the rocket launchers on it, you just can't put the warheads on it unless you're a police agency. So <clears throat> the arms race is on. And I remember all these years ago, I warned you from MIT documents that were public, Pentagon, DARPA documents that were public, that they said by 2012 they wanted half the Air Force to be drone. It's 2012. More than half the Air Force is now drone. Last time I checked, the Air Force has something like 10,000 predators, another 8,000 ordered. The Army has thousands of them. The Marines have thousands of them. Thousands. Thousands. I think what, what the Army has a couple thousand, the Marines have a couple thousand. You think the Army would have more than the Marines. Uh, the, 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 the Marines have got a bunch of these little helicopters that they call, uh, what, the uh, Scout. Gray helicopters with missile launchers on them. And it's on. <clears throat> and I, I did some searching last night. I mean, I'd already seen these articles over the last year, but I did some searching and pulled these articles back up. Police departments all over the country have bought combat drones. Uh, I remember talking to a Marine Corps captain source who told me about the combat robots they had in 99. Then I went to an urban warfare drill and was talking to some of the, some of the officers, the, a colonel and others. And when I brought up combat drones that were actually uh, four-legged and things, they got very upset and said, you need to get out of here. They were acting real friendly until I brought that up. But the minute you bring up something classified like that, because they know their whole career is over, if they even act like they're talking to you, they freak out. Hey! A secret armies of robots against the American people is not kosher, okay? And it's not going to fly, pun intended. I noticed in a video I shot last night and uploaded about 10 uh, dealing with the drones that's at Infowars.com. Drones to attack the American people. Armed drones to attack the American people is the headline linking to the other articles and the boil down that Paul Watson did yesterday with links to the uh, different stories. I noticed people saying, oh, get the tinfoil hats out, everybody. This is Salon, drones for urban warfare, 
Manufacturers are targeting U.S. police forces for sales as drones move from the Middle East to the Main Street. Okay, here's CBS last night. Groups concerned over arming of domestic drones. I mean, right here in Texas, they've got combat drones. Combat drones with shotguns and grenade launchers. And they go on to say they want them to, for crowd control with speakers and rubber bullets. They always phase it in with a less lethal. They call them non-lethal in the news, but they're really called less lethal inside the industry to get you used to the image of drones firing on people. And then next, it's real weapons. Or the taser only kills you, you know, one out of 30 or 40 people. So they up the power 30% or more. Now it kills even more people. This is what's going on. This is the real world. And just saying tinfoil hat isn't going to protect you. Oh, we said they'd have a global government run by six megabanks. Those exact six megabanks that I told you about over a decade ago are announcing global government as a solution to the derivatives crisis they created. The re-education camps are admitted. Everything is coming out in the open. But so many of the population are preconditioned that they can't resist it via Stockholm Syndrome, mass collective Stockholm Syndrome, mass denial, cognitive dissonance, learned helplessness, and the normalcy bias. And this is why the Germans did what they did. They were much more hardworking and moral and upright than I've looked at the sociology, the history, the anthropology. The Germans of the 30s were so much more moral than Americans are today and make your head spin. Just like Americans of the 30s were much more moral. America is going to go so much worse than Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia if these globalists have their way. I mean, how many clips do I have to give you? You heard Lord Moncton here yesterday sourcing mainstream news saying, arrest and kill those of us that don't believe in man-made global warming and don't want to pay Al Gore and Barack Obama money to their climate exchange. They say, kill us. Kill us. I can play you the informant who was at the highest levels of the... Uh, Weatherman, this later came out in court and Ayers had to admit it, where they plan to put 50 plus million in camps and kill half of us, 25 mil. You're, and again, your normalcy bias won't let you deal with that. We have sickening scum who don't care about having a happy, safe, good country. They want power. They want to dominate. It's a will to power. And if we don't get really aggressive with these globalists, they're going to stage terror attacks and they're going to shut down the internet as we know it and they're going to come and arrest Alex Jones. And they're going to come and they're going to arrest even people who think they can work with a system like Glenn Beck and Rupert Murdoch. You're all going to jail. And they're getting that ready. I told you that was coming years ago. When they start going after News Corps, you know they're going after everybody else because it's seen in the power structure as an enemy. Not that it isn't even part of the power structure. But the power structure will start eating its own. And when you see the globalists eating their own and power struggles at the very top, that means they're going into the hot phase. And it's going to result in civil war in this country. It's going to result in dead cops piled up to the sky and dead citizens. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you better get over your normalcy bias and your learned helplessness and your mass Stockholm syndrome right now. The system wants to give everybody these toys as a psychological warfare device to scare everyone and to have forward observers arm drones so that people feel like resistance is futile. Well, everybody has shown in psychology, aerial bombardment actually unifies populations. But this is a tinker toy so the police can go under federal control, they have to do that to have these drones, and feel like you know, they're playing a video game when they're killing citizens. It's to remove the humanity from it. And, and here's the rest of the story. By 2020, they intend to have the entire combat force of ground troops and forces in the air, the entire force will be robots. They intend to have the entire force. That's why they're getting ready to put women in frontline combat and have all this, because that's all gone. There's not going to be humans going to space. There's not going to be humans. This 
fighting or flying jets anymore. It's not going to even be zit-faced. Weldon Henson, who got out of the Air Force five years ago and works here, worked on F-16s. He's brought in his you know, photos of him and his buddies, pretty interesting stuff. And he said almost everyone he knows is still in the Air Force is like basically laughing at the regular pilots now because the people that were loading bombs on F-16s and all this and working on their engines, they are all training to fly the drones. But it, see, that's already over. The LA Times reported months ago, they're coming out with the autonomous drones. They already have autonomous drones, autonomous helicopters, everything, where they go out with a pre-programmed mission and kind of, in an autonomous way, kill. And again, the globalists don't care if the military says no and stands down because they're already building factories with robots that work on the robots and all they have to have is technocrats that sit there and do fine tuning and things. Okay, this is the new world order revolution. So all you cops and you know all of you that are tough guys out there and you're in a war and you're gonna win and you've got all these toys and you like killing people and it's a video game for you, you've already been implanted with cancer viruses. You've already been implanted with deadly radioactive isotopes and fluoride and other deadly chemicals. This is all already happened. This is already unfolding. This is already going on. And again, you're going to laugh now. Down the road, you're going to remember what I told you. Even when my voice is erased off the Internet, they already have those programs they can go through in a matter of hours and block my voice worldwide, remove it off everything. So you better be taking these videos and storing them in old media formats. You better be getting small copying machines and low-tech systems to get the word out. You better get ready for the resistance because here's the deal. They're going to come and kill over 90% of us. For a long time, you've heard me talk about building your own. Ladies and gentlemen, during the break, I was in the coffee room, uh, in the break room getting a coffee. I was going to get a tangy tangerine, but I didn't have time to stir it up. So I thought, well, I have a little half cup of coffee. That's all that was sitting in one of the coffee makers. Side issue, as I like to say, segue away from that. And guess what I saw on um, the uh, television? It was a Cisco ad. And, and guys, you could probably pull this up on YouTube. I'm sure Cisco has its TV ads on a YouTube um, official page. I bet money on it. And it was Cisco Innovative Solutions. Assembly lines that fix themselves. Robots that work on the robots. And they were bragging that they don't even have technicians to fix the robots that fix the robots. Totally automated. Again, exactly what I was just saying. Did you ever think, where are the humans going to be involved in all of this? And you're like, well, that's just innovation. That's just evolution. Exactly. That's what the globalists say. That's what Ray Kurzweil, that's what all of them say. The UN says it's a post-human planet. There it is, Cisco Robot. That's the ad I was just watching. Amazing. We'll uh, come back from break then, and that looks like the same ad. Yeah, this is it. And then they say, oh, don't worry, robots fix the robots. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Assembly lines that fix themselves. The most innovative companies are doing things they never could before by building on the Cisco Intelligent Network. So that's just what I just saw out there. And that's the double edge of technology. I can see something literally a minute and a half ago, come in here and mention it, the human computers in there that can recognize beauty and love their children, you know, the dominant species on this planet, they were able to then interface with a computer and bring that up in seconds. But the globalists just say, oh, we've taken control of human development, evolution, if you want to use that term, and we've decided that the elite are going to merge with computers and live forever, and we're going to kill the rest of you. In Wired Magazine, you know, as I talked about 12 years ago, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us, Bill Joy, he said, yeah, I met with a, at a big meeting of the richest people in the world, 200 of them, and we've decided that we're just going to kill everybody. And that's the debate he said was happening. And he said the public really doesn't care. So things are leaning towards just killing everyone. We've decided that'll be better for the Earth. And that's just the co-founder and owner of some microsystems. 
And of course, out of that, you have the head of Cisco. He was part of that. And I'll never forget in the year 2000, they had him on uh, Lair News Hour. I think it was McNeil Lair, still in 2000. They said, what do you look forward to most in the new millennium? And he said, microchips and everyone tracking you wherever you go. My son will have a chip and everything about him will be known. We'll have a virtual reality where everything is tracked by microchips, RFID. He started laughing demonically. And then I get on there and I say, hey, I just saw him say this. And they're like, oh, shut up, Cook. Everything's fine. And so they're just telling us this is the new system. They phase it in, condition everybody, have you scramble and fight to get the latest product. You pay for the washer, the dryer, the, the computer, the iPhone. There's BBC saying barcode, everyone at birth, everyone needs a microchip. See, it's all just in your face now. Oh, we're never going to do that now. Yeah, you bet we're going to make you. And the troops are going to have chips too. And you pay for it. When you go buy an iPhone, around 30 to 40% from the different analysts I've talked to of the cost, and then the fact it doesn't work as well as it would, is all the back doors and tech spying on you. Under federal law, they have to be able to dial into this even when it's turned off. And it looks like it's off, but I can always tell when they're doing that because I'll turn it on the battery is completely down. It'll also get hot when they access those systems. I, I mean, I've seen it before. Last time I was at Bilderberg, the power would just race down on it. I could never keep it charged, uh, the phone I had then, and everybody's phone was doing it. And then, and then they called up and told my wife they'd been listening to the conversation minutes before and, you know, said threatening things to her. So it's not just, oh, look, my thing's running out of batteries, you know, triple fast. They're listening. Even when it's turned off, oh, no, no, they want me to know. Yeah, we're listening, and uh, we, you know we hope your dad dies in the hospital. That was to her, her uh, about her dad, and or was it her mom? They were both sick at the time, and you know we're gonna we hope you die. And then another call back about how, oh, uh, I'm calling for Alex. Um, oh, well, who is it? Oh, uh, who is this? I, I'm his fiance. Well, that's impossible. We're married. Yeah, just stop. That's who runs this country. They'll kill a million Iraqis for oil and no bid contracts. And you think they care about you? The New World Order hates you. They hate the troops. It's all, oh, have more wars. It's for the troops. That's why 12 years ago they started taking their death benefits. You know, when the troops die, they signed a deal with the Pentagon, the big insurance companies, to steal your money. You know, when you're in the military, they say, oh, just take part of your checkout to put in a death benefit for your family. You're not going to get that money. Because criminals who think they're God and think they're going to merge with computers are in charge. We're going to come back and get more into the news. Straight ahead and then your phone calls. I'll give you the number when we come back. Stay with us. We're on the march. You know, I wish we could sit here and joke around about the calamity, the degeneration of society that we're in. The globalists understand that humans tend to muddle through things. And so what they do is they just phase them in slowly until incredibly horrible things are happening and people are just accustomed to it. Diabetes up over 2,000%. Cancer on average up over 2,000%. Diabetes up closer to 3,000%. Type 2 in the last 50 years. Neurological disorders up several thousand percent. Diseases and uh, problems with the bones up massively. We are being absolutely slaughtered. And we just go along with the system because it's peer pressure. We're taught from birth. That's all that matters. In a free society, being free and standing up for what you believe in is what matters and what is honorable but not in this system it's all about the surface and that's why people are so hollow and in surveys say they're so unhappy because no amount of worldliness is going to fulfill you Does that mean you should all run off the desert and wear sackcloth no and the hierarchy of needs it's important to be financially uh, secure to have good transportation all of that but you wouldn't sell out for that. That is what's at the top of your hierarchy of needs on the top of your pyramid. The human destiny, a sense of pride in humanity, a sense of wanting to build up the species, that's civilization. A sense of wanting a fair shake, a instinctive drive to seek out corrupt evil people and run them out of town. That's what builds societies. 
Instead, we've got the crooks in control, and they're seeking to persecute goodness and goodliness and run it out of town. All over the country, your taxpayer money is being used in even small departments to buy weaponized drones. Giant armored vehicles, heavy armored vehicles. We're talking about vehicles with six-inch plate for combat against the American people. And in the training manuals, they got them primed on fighting jihadis. They're flipping it, as I told you would, to good old boys. Of course, if it does go to civil war, people aren't going to come out and look for you when you're in your tank. Folks are going to come and look for you when you're at the bar or the restaurant. Uh, as you abuse and kill more people, no amount of drones are going to protect you. But again, that's all a fraud to begin with. Because you are under attack. You are obsolete. If the globalists in all of their public publications say, by 2020, there will not be combat forces. There will be paramilitary groups that they keep as a vestigial holdback in very small numbers per city to go after the American people. But you're going to see police actually start going away from weapons in the next phase, and it's all going to be automated robots, automated drones on the ground and in the air they send after you. This is the nanny state. It's going to put in a technocracy in their words. What do the globalists call themselves? They say, yes, we are technocrats, which is a technological dictatorship. Financial Times, Economist, Wall Street Journal, hundreds of publications. They say, we are the technocrats. Aren't you lucky that we're taking your rights away? They actually are saying it publicly and saying, yeah, we need to arrest people that don't want a global carbon tax paid to the central banks. Yeah, we need to. We need to start shutting down talk radio. Yeah, we need to We need to start, uh, you know, curtailing the web. And, and if we say you violated copyright three times, no judge, no jury, you're banned from the web with Internet ID now being proposed by the Bilderberg Group. Publicly proposed by uh, one of their top ministers in the EU for worldwide, starting in the euro. And even Drudge picked that up yesterday because it's a public statement. This is all here. The power to track is the power to tax and destroy. Let this be a testament that you are warned. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. So, oh, there'll never be drones, even though they were flying around 10 years ago. Predators, now reapers. Going after, quote, cattle rustlers. The cattle had gone onto the North Dakota property more than 10 times. Under law, the people said, that's it. Your cows keep getting in with our cows. We're keeping it. That's standard procedure. They sent in... Air Force drone because the people owned guns and the local SWAT team coordinated with the drone to wait till a time that the farming family was not quote having guns in their hands and were out on their tractors this is agenda 21 this is the shutdown of society now in Minnesota and California they're doing door to door with list of customers that have bought raw milk and without warrants, busting in and taking the milk. And you're like, well, that's absurd. Tyranny is meant to be absurd. They asked Lenin in public communiques that were released about a decade ago out of the old Soviet archives. You know, even the New York Times reported on these. They would say to Lenin, all right, we've already rounded up in these areas half the people. We've killed a large percentage. The others are in slave camps. Everyone else is totally submitting. He just said, kill more. I want terror. I want fear. Quote, I want more blood. And that's the red star, symbolizes blood. And all the Trotskyites that got kicked out by Stalin, double-crossed by him, they all went to Mexico and the U.S., and they were the neocons. They bragged um, that they're Trotskyites. And, but they called themselves conservatives, and they built up a giant military against us. But that's now Obama runs that, and, and, and they all work in concert together. And now they're going to phase that out. And it's the new drone army. And, and, and this is it. And I would talk about this over the last decade because it's in M MIT Magazine brags about it. I remember...
remember again five six years ago my wife wanted a salad and so i went up to the cypress grill off william cannon and i went in there and sat at the bar ordered a beer while i was waiting for the food and they had a stack of mit magazine i guess somebody that worked there or something had been to mit it was just, or the owner, I don't know, it was, I'm guessing it was a magazine rack full of MIT magazine. And I picked one up, and it was the entire program in Iraq as a laboratory for the United States. Disneyland is a Pentagon warfare laboratory of locking down U.S. cities. It's so wonderful. I go home, search it, find all that stuff. Just in your face. And, and these geeks get off on the power of it. And the guys in the military do. I mean, do you see what you're building? Oh, you're good guys. I forgot. This is all for our own safety. I was at a birthday party for one of my daughters. Daughter's birthday last weekend. And there was a lawyer there. And I'm sitting there talking to him. And people are talking about Disneyland and having to hand scan to get in. And I said, yeah, it's a Pentagon laboratory. And people were looking at me, so I got my phone out and was searching and showed them. Since 1996, it's been a Pentagon laboratory. See, there's mice and happy animals and goofy and everything, and you go in, everything's fun, and they're RFID scanning you with a bracelet, they're hand scanning you, face scanning cameras are watching you the entire time, tracking you. It's a model of a lockdown city like G20 or any of this. This is the new America, this is the new world, and it's a tech grid that's growing like tentacles into everything. RFID. In fact, there's articles today. Uh, what in uh, what is it? Associated Press. Here's a boil down out of it out of uh, the week. Bars using app and hidden cameras to scan customers' faces. Max Cabrera during um, South by Southwest went out to a demonstration of this. We never even got the report done. We don't have enough staff. We're so busy we can't even get the time to interview and hire the new staff. But we're trying. But that report's out there with the company. Actually, where you go in the bar and it face scans everybody and, of course, puts it in the database. Um, I remember 10, 12 years ago uh, getting a um, tour of the uh, UT psychology department, the unclassified areas. I might have accidentally seen some of the classified. Oopsie. Uh, but it was all retina scanners hidden in the grocery store to track you and then test you and then track your psychological profile biometric movement systems i mean basically you've paid for a bunch of eugenics mad scientists to build a giant supermax prison and to poison the living daylights out of you and your family and publish it in countless rockefeller foundation documents that we link to at infowars.com on a daily basis now we find new horrific ones uh, worldwide, the UN goes into countries, in some cases, 46,000 in India alone, paralyzes children with the, with the polio shot. Then, then it spreads polio, and they say, we've got to polio vaccinate everybody because polio is spreading. Then it spreads faster, and, they, they, and, they, and they're just devastating and killing and paralyzing people in hellish attacks. Bella and Melinda Gage riding that white horse, something fierce. And the normalcy bias, learned helplessness, Stockholm syndrome people go, I'm going to choose to not believe this. It's too scary. I'm going to cuddle up and grovel to the system and worship tyranny as if that's going to save you. And then you get to word your 10-year-old's got Crohn's disease from the GMO, or you get to word your 32-year-old wife's got the breast cancer, though they're going to kill her slow. And still, you say, oh, this just can't be true. I got a family, you know, I, I don't want to be involved in politics. Well, you're dead. You're dead then. You're dead. Everything's going to start moving. Live, it's one for the record. I'm Diana. And today is May 25th, 2012. It is Friday, 
Friday afternoon. And here is your update for today. That was Alex Jones on Prison Planet TV. That was the radio show. And I thought some of the things he said were very important for people to hear. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's going to uh, show up the way the camera is when it faces the computer screen. But uh, you can at least run it just like, just like if it was a uh, radio show, because that's what it is. It's just that you get to see what's behind the radio show. Been real lucky to find this one. This was this aired yesterday afternoon. And uh, let me give you your update for today. And I know that was long. It's actually, it's a lot longer than that. I think it goes for four or five hours or three or four hours. But um, I just wanted to make sure you got to see and or, and or hear uh, what's going, what's, what's really going on. So we'll go into the extinction protocol. Let's do that first. I'm moving a little slower because I had to switch the camera around and I couldn't load anything. So here is your news update. It's kind of early, but hey, we're on top of it for today. Okay. New earthquake. We have a new earthquake. It's in Christchurch, New Zealand. New quake shakes nervous church Christ sending shoppers fleeing into the street. And that was a that was a four point seven. Also five point six earthquake which jolted Bulgaria was strongest since eighteen fifty eight. And aftershocks continue. Again, 60,000 to 100,000 dead fish wash up eastern shores of U.S. near Chesapeake Bay. Let's go and see if there's anything new now in the e-energy news. E and E news. If you could, if if you can't see uh, Alex Jones's uh, report, at least just listen to it because most of that is only aired on the radio. Walk away and do other stuff while you are listening to it. I hope not just staring at the screen. If you couldn't, if it didn't come out. Always do that with my stuff. You can listen to it like a radio report. Alrighty then. Today. TEPCO checks for cracks and spent fuel pool number four. Now says reactor building not tipping, not tilting as a whole. UN. Radiation expert. Neutron exposure from Fukushima criticalities not measured. Asashi. Major problems with radiation testing for children. Unexplained. TEPCO could not measure amount of radiation released when Unit 4 exploded. Impossibility high. Who's which is the World Health or Organization. Initial report estimated Tokyo and Osaka infant thyroid dose at 10 to 100 millisieverts up to one full sievert in NAMI. Or is it NAMI? And again, TEPCO emits high temps may have degraded containment vessels after meltdowns. Massive amounts of fallout released from upper part of reactors. And also from yesterday, but I don't think I reported on it, press conference. Japanese government kills our children still now. 
I am very worried. Yes, I, I think I did report that yesterday. Now, today is a three-day weekend. I'm reminding you, it's Memorial Day weekend. Heads up, it's Memorial Day weekend. Traffic's going to be real bad out there on a Friday, in case you forgot. Especially if you're in Los Angeles on the 405. Let's see what else is going on. Let's go into U.S. Canada real quick. U.S. Congressman, days before officials can enter fire damage area of nuclear sub. And again, <coughs> yesterday, Commander reveals nuclear fuel on board burned sub. Local news. He could not say how much. How much what? Nuclear fuel's on there? Or how much it burned? Or, or what? So, okay. Let's go into the watchers. See if anything's going on in outer space. Here we go. We're getting this done early. I might try to see if uh, Bill Deagle's on. He should be coming on also right now. This might be one one heck of a program today. Very informative. Here we go. Yes, there's new news. We're today on the watchers. Low temperatures in Peru killed 94 children since January this year. Oh, that's a shame. That's terrible. Magnitude 5.2 earthquake struck 10 kilometers off the coast of Christchurch, New Zealand. And then magnitude 6.2 earthquake in Greenland Sea. That's posted May 25th. And again, uh, circumpolar rivers most responsible for high levels of mercury in Arctic. And I believe I reported on all this yesterday that's coming up. Alrighty then, we'll check SOT.net real quick. So you might be getting ready to leave town and that way you can get a quick spot on the news here okay. might have to check um, Dutch out that might be something to do since everyone's going to be traveling I'll check out Dutch Sense real quick this is a long program today for the long holiday weekend so again the banks might be closed on Monday the trash might not get picked up reminder Post office is going to be, the post office is going to be closed. That's probably for sure. Let's see here. Okay. Hurricane Bud heading for area near Porto, Porto Vallarta. That's today. Heads up if you're going in that direction for the holiday weekend. And let's see what else we got here. Something new. Earthquake magnitude 4.8 shakes nervous Christchurch, sending shoppers fleeing into the streets. So there was a bigger one too off the coast. Original radiation released by Fukushima 2.5 times higher than what TEPCO told public. Heads up, tornado confirmed on ground near Wasu, Wisconsin. Late season storm could bring summer snow to Sierra, California. Scientific experts confounded by increasing snow cover on Mount. Kilimanjaro. That one was yesterday. Here's another one, though, from today. Tornado damages 15 homes in North Port, Florida. Heads up! Tornado damages 15 homes in North Port, Florida. 
Tornado steel seen in Kansas couple's weddings photo. That was yesterday. Yeah, they're standing there smiling. <laughs> and off behind them on the left is a tornado. Okay, that's it. Also, again, the 60,000 to 100,000 dead fish wash up eastern shores of U.S. near Chesapeake Bay. All right, now was yesterday's. So, why don't we see, why don't we see if we can uh, get into Dr. Bill Deagle. Let's see if he's on. If he's not on, then we'll end this report. But if he's on, then you can, uh, with his Friday report, then you can, uh, Start packing, doing whatever you're doing for the holiday weekend, and listen to also Bill Deagle. But if it runs too slow, then I won't do it. Let's keep the sound down. And this is off of the Genesis Telecommunications. And we are running a little bit slow today. Usually, don't, that's why I like doing this kind of late at night. It seems like there's less people on the web, so everything moves a little faster. Okay, let's see Genesis. Let's see if we can catch Dr. Bill Deagle. I bet you Alex Jones is on right now, too. Let's see who's live on the air. Let's go into I think it's all Alex Jones right now. Let's see what's going on. He's uh, up and running for today, but I, I, I really want to see uh, who's live. Let's go on demand. Not to do that. It's not going over to him. It takes a few seconds to set this up. I'm sorry for the wait. But we're getting the report out early today. Just so everyone, you know, because who knows what else you're going to be doing this weekend. Okay, let's listen to the live player. Let's see what's going on out there. Who's up and running right now? Might be all Alex Jones. Not a bad thing, though. No, he's on. Alrighty, then. You have a... I'll try to catch Bill Deagle on Saturday, whatever he reports today. He must be coming on way later. Alrighty, then. Let me close this and close this. I think that was one of his best reports. That I've heard a long time. Let's see. He's always he always has good reports, but I just had to share the report from yesterday with you that I saw. Alrighty then. Five days down. It's the Memorial Day weekend. It's a three day weekend. This is the eve of the weekend. I actually count Friday night, you know, Friday, late Friday afternoon. That starts the weekend, really. You have a wonderful, wonderful uh, Memorial Day weekend. Get those barbecues ready. We'll get your uh, store supplies. And uh, I will see you again tomorrow. Take care.